Hey guys and welcome back to building the ultimate all-in-one woodworking station. In my previous video I installed my table saw and was able to get some usability out of my bed. In this one I'm going to focus on my mitre saw and I want it to stand right here so I can use the bench to support any overhang I might be cutting on the saw. But because I'm not a big fan of putting pieces of offcut underneath the stock to level it out, I want my bed on my table or on my mitre saw to sit level with the top of my bench. In addition to that, I want my mitre saw to be able to pack away or fold away because if I'm cutting wider stock on my table saw, it will obviously collide with my mitre saw. To get the bed of the mitre saw at the same level as the top of the bench, I'm going to remove a segment of the top just like I did with the uh, table saw. And then install a platform lower down allowing the bed of the table saw to sit level with the top of the bench. In addition to this, I'm going to install a pivot at the back allowing me to fold away the mitre saw when I'm using, sawing bigger stock on the table saw. So to make my life easier, I once again, just like I did with the table saw, installed a piece of wood here at the back or brace. This allowed me to drill these holes in the corners from the bottom, giving me a reference point to where my cut line should be because I can't see the space or the cavity from the top, obviously. Uh, so now I'll just cut on these cut lines, it's about 2 or 3 mil in from where I want it to sit, cut with the jigsaw on the line and then use the router to trim it flush. With the piece of the top removed where the mitre saw is going to stand, I can almost start working on its base. Just before I go on, I'm just going to add a chamfer to the edge here to not restrict any stock moving uh, over the top or, or get caught on, on the edge here. Okay, so this is the underside of the base that the mitre saw is going to stand on. I'm only going to fix these planks here just to strengthen it a bit. And that's it for the base. Uh, if I just wanted to recess my mitre saw, um, I could install the base just like this. But obviously, like I said, I want, to, want it to fold away. So now I'm going to install the folding mechanism. Now the way I'm planning on achieving the folding mechanism or hinge um, is by taking these little square planks and I've drilled a, a hole in the center of them, fit four of them like that and then use this stainless steel pipe as the, the pivot point. Something like that. And that's it for the pivot on the base of the mitre saw. Um, I can remove this pipe now and then focus on putting in the mountings on the inside that would allow it to fold. Okay, so with the bed on the mitre saw, or the bed for the mitre saw, pretty much complete, it's time to install the pivot on the bench. So the pipe is obviously going to run through these two panels. And I'm going to put an oversized hole here. I'm using a 90 mm 3 quarter inch stainless steel pipe. I'm going to put a slightly bigger hole here so it can move. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to adjust it. Uh, the pipe on the other side I'm going to house inside this bush, it's a nylon bush that I had made by a family member. I will post the dimensions on the bush on my site if you, if you guys want to you know, check that out. And then the bush I'm going to house inside this square, which I drilled a hole in the center there. I'm going to fix the bush, I put a flange on it with four holes there, I'm going to fix it with screws. And then the square as well I put in slots, which is going to give me the ability 
to adjust the height on the on the miter saw. Simply build two holes and cut out the gap there with a miter uh, with a jigsaw, sorry, and then this will be fixed on the other side. Uh, that will give me the ability to perfectly line up the bed on my miter saw with the top or the bed, uh, the top of my workbench. Okay, so I've drilled my oversized holes, slightly bigger OD than the pipe I'm using. Uh, two holes cut out with the jigsaw so I can uh, move it up and down. And I'm going to fix my plank with the slots that's going to house my bush on the other side using uh, these rounded bolts that come in from this side. But because my base for my mitre saw is quite a tight fit in here, these bolts heads can't protrude. So I'm going to just sink them into this board. Okay, now I'm just going to do the other side and then I'm ready to fix my bush housings. Okay, so for now I just put normal nuts on here. Uh, this is going to give me the ability to put my pipe in and put my miter saw on the bed, adjust the height and fix it. Then I'm going to add nylocks on top of it. The reason I didn't put nylocks on now is because, because there's nothing holding the bolt on the other side. If I turn it, it's just going to turn it uh, around if I put a nylock on straight away. I haven't added the bush either yet. I'm going to put the pipe through first and then I'll knock the bush in on top of it just making my life a bit easier. With the bush housing installed, housings installed, I'm ready to install the mitre bed. The only extra work I did on it before I'm going to put it in is I put a 45 chamfer around the edges just to tidy it up and then I put these two holes here which will be explained later on in the video. But basically uh, the shaft is going to support the bed on the back or at the back and then the front is going to latch in front through these holes. Okay, because installing this shelf is not really a one-man job, I just put um, planks underneath so I can feed the pipe through from the other side. I'm hoping it's going to stay more or less strutted like this. And that's the pipe installed. Now I can fit my bushes. Now to install the bush, I'm just going to knock it over the pipe here and fix it using screws. Oh, that was quite easy. Okay, so now I'll just fix it with screws like that. And that's it. Um, all I need to do now is add a clamp here to prevent the pipe from pulling out. Now to clamp the pipe, I made these out of aluminium, half inch aluminium flat bar. Uh, the idea is for them to just go over the pipe like that and I can tighten it and it will prevent the pipe from pulling out. Um, once again, I'll post the dimensions for, for the clamp but I'm pretty sure if you look hard enough you'll find something along those lines just to purchase.
Now, according to the spec sheet for the mitre saw, the bed height is 85 millimeters. I've marked 85 millimeters on the inside of the panels here, and I'm going to adjust the bed to that height. But any additional adjustments that may be needed afterwards to line it up perfectly, I will do then. Okay, with the back fixed, I'm now going to install the latches on the front that's supposed to support the front of the, of the bed. I'm going to use these guys, fit them on a spacer so that the spacer will also stop uh, or act as a stopper when you're swinging up the bed and then you will engage the latch keeping the front part uh, in place. Okay, so with both latches installed, all that's left is to install the cradle on the mitre saw bed and this mechanism should be working. And that's it, uh, the mechanism installed, the latches seem to be working fine, I tested the, the bed by sitting on it, it holds my weight just fine, I am going to add additional fixing uh, uh, the top to the panning here, screws here, and then I can start installing the saw. Okay, so I've got the saw on the bed now, now I just need to center it properly and I can fix it to the bed. Height-wise, it is not 100% right yet because the saw has rubbers at the bottom that I did not take into consideration because when I tighten the saw to the bed, these rubbers will obviously compress. So only after I've tightened the saw to the bed, I can line it up perfectly with the top of the bench. Okay, so with the saw fixed, it's time to see how much work it's going to take to level it out properly. On the left side, it, it looks good. Very good. The right side is a little bit out. So all I'm going to do is slightly loosen these nuts that hold it, and I'll knock it up with a mallet to level it out. So with the bed leveled out, I can now fix the nuts properly. I've also added bigger washers because the smaller one seemed a little bit too small. And then fix the lock nuts as well. And uh, with everything attached now, the top here, the, these guys, I've also added these pins to prevent the latches from going open. The, plates on the side, the bush housings, everything's fixed. I guess it's time to test it and see if it works. And it seems so. With the mitre saw installed and the mechanism working, there's just a few small additions I would still like to make. I want to add stoppers in the inside of these panels to support the mitre saw when it's folded down. A panel in the front here to close up this cavity. Additional bracing on the folding mechanism and maybe just another fail safe for in case the latches had to fail for whatever reason. As for the paneling to close this cavity and for the fail safe, that's going to get explained in a later video. The reason for this is, because I've got so much equipment on this bench, I'm only going to run one power supply to it. From there, I'm going to split it out to all the different components. Some of that wiring and also some of the dust extraction uh, tubing is going to be installed in this cavity, so I'm going to need access to it. Also, the panel that gets installed here is going to form part of the compressor installation, so I'd rather do that when I explain the compressor. 
As for the failsafe, that's going to be installed on top of the panel. And that's it for part 3 of my all-in-one workstation build. As you can see, I can still use my table saw for narrow cuts or small cuts, but when I want to saw larger panels, I'm going to be able to pack away my miter saw. Uh, in the original design, I did have a cover to close it up when the saw is folded down, but because I only intend on folding down the saw when I'm cutting wider panels on my table saw or when I'm using the router table that's going to be installed in this section here as well, um, I don't think it's necessary. I don't really want the saw to be stored in that position. I just want to be able to pack it away when I need to move larger, larger pieces of, of wood for the router table or the table saw over the area where the saw is standing. With the mitre saw installed, I can clean up and start working on the next installation. There's still a lot to come, like centralized power distribution and dust extraction, and a whole bunch of extra tools I still want to install. If you'd like to see that, remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.